much and I want to say there we go. So good morning and welcome to everyone. It's uh, now September 23rd and I will call this uh, meeting of county council uh, to order. I want to welcome everyone. Uh, it's a uh, boy we've had a few days of uh, fairly heavy rain and uh, I can tell you that uh, I, I pulled out my rubber boots, which I used on a daily basis when I was on the farm, but uh, I still keep them around for occasions just like this. Um, <clears throat> Madam Clerk, roll call, uh, please. Certainly, Ms. Borden. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we have all members in attendance, with the exception of uh, Councillor Soever and Mackey. They have sent their regrets, and their alternates were unable to attend in their, in their place. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, next is our land acknowledgement. And so I'll say that we acknowledge with respect the history, spirituality, and culture of the Anishinaabek, the Six Nations of the Grand River, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat, Wyandot, Wyandot peoples on whose traditional territories we gather and whose ancestors signed treaties with our ancestors. We recognize also the Métis and the Inuit whose ancestors shared this land and these waters. May we all as treaty people live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship with all of its diverse peoples. Okay, council, is there any uh, declaration of interest, pecuniary or otherwise? I see no hands and I would just say if one does come up during the course of the meeting, I would ask you to declare it at that time. Item number five, uh, we are looking for adoption of minutes starting with 5A, adoption of the minutes dated September 9th, um, <clears throat> Council and Committee of the Whole. That's moved by Councillor Robinson and seconded by Councillor Carlton. Any discussion on those? Uh, seeing none, I will call the question. Is there anyone opposed? And seeing none, I'm gonna say that is carried, thank you. Um, 5B is the uh, to adopt the uh, development charges a minute dated September 13th. That's moved by Councillor Keaveney and seconded by Councillor Carlton. Is there any discussion on those? <clears throat> and no discussion. I'll call the question. Is there anyone opposed to adoption of those minutes? That too is carried. Item 5C is the Long-Term Care Committee of Management minutes. Uh, dated September 14th. That's moved again by Councillor Robinson and seconded by Councillor Klumpus. Any discussion? And once again, seeing none, I'm going to call the question. Is there anyone opposed to adoption of those minutes? No hands showing. I'm going to say that that too is carried. Item 5T, 5D, excuse me, is the Long-Term Care Committee of Management closed uh, minutes. Um, and that is moved by Councillor Robinson and seconded by Councillor Klumpus. Um, I'm going to assume that there's no discussion, otherwise we'd have to go into closed session. Anyone opposed to adoption of those minutes? And there are no hands, so I'm going to say that too is carried. Scroll down a little bit here. Uh, item six is uh, if we have any closed meeting matters and there are none. Uh, item seven is good news and celebrations. Uh, Councillor Potter, you're first. Uh, thank you, Warden. And uh, just a couple of uh, items. Uh, one is that the Brew Mountains Public Library is entering the, entering the second phase of their strategic planning study. Uh, they have about 800 people so far who have provided feedback in short conversations and starting next month, uh, we call it the GLAM because it's a gallery library uh, uh, and art uh, gallery and the, uh, and the, the uh, library itself, as well as the museum will be bringing uh, focus groups with 18 scheduled so far. Uh, and uh, so it's a highly comprehensive study over the next four years, which will inf inform the next four years and beyond uh, for services. Uh, and uh, we'll see the uh, results of that uh, with some of the progress coming up in the upcoming uh, issue of the Blue Mountains Review. The other thing I wanted to bring up is a little more concerning. It's the uh, some localized flooding 
Uh, we have in the prices uh, development in, in Montero Road area over around Blue Mountain, around Craig Lee. Uh, we're seeing some flooding there reported by our operation staff and uh, also in some of the rural areas. So, uh, so far all the ditches are, are running full and problem free, but uh, they're being monitored throughout the day today as the rain continues. I know that uh, some of the other municipalities in gray are are experiencing similar issues. So I just uh, caution the public uh, and the rest of council and staff to be careful as they go about their business today that there may be some flooding issues. Uh, and uh, given the weather forecast, I don't think it'll get any better in the next day or two. Thank you, Councillor Potter. Good words of advice. Uh, Councillor Keaveney, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Warden and good morning, County Council. I think everyone is aware of the struggles businesses are facing these days in securing and retaining enough staff. So uh, Meekard, in partnership with the Meekard Chamber of Commerce, RTO7, Employment Ontario, and Y Employment Services is hosting a job fair. This will take place at our community center on October the 7th between the hours of 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Uh, there's many part-time, full-time, seasonal, and student positions available, and we encourage any job seekers to register at YMCA, um, owensound.on.ca slash Meaford Job Fair uh, to guarantee a spot to, uh, to come in and uh, speak to the businesses who will be attending, and proof of vaccination uh, will be required when you come into our community centre. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Keegan. Do you mind giving that uh, website uh, once more, a little bit more slowly? Um, absolutely, Mr. Warden. So the website would be ymcaonsound.on.ca slash Meaford Job Fair. Excellent. Thank you very much. Councillor. My pleasure. You're next. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Good morning, uh, County Council. Uh, just want to say that uh, we're welcome, uh, welcome out to Landing Gear Diner. Um, they had their grand opening yesterday at the Saugy Municipal Airport. Chef Crystal was there. She, um, I think she has three family members that are helping them, but uh, I think uh, I know Mayor Patterson was out. We enjoyed uh, just the, the grand opening there, but uh, all the best to her success. She is going to be open Tuesday to Sunday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, as a start, and then uh, we'll revisit the hours as those things develop. Thank you. Thank you, and all the success to that uh, restaurant operation. I know it does help to attract uh, pilots to the airport. Uh, Councillor Body, you're next. Good morning, um, Warden Hex and, and Council. Uh, next Thursday, as we all know, is the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation, and this did come up a little bit short for all of us, and I'm sure we all look forward to doing more uh, and perhaps doing better next year. Um, Council and Owen Sound chose to close down City Hall for the uh, day in recognition of that day. Um, at the Mawikwadong Friendship Center, which is in the old Dufferin School at 3rd Avenue and approximately 10th Street West, they will have a sacred fire ceremony starting at one. Uh, there will be a sacred fire and gathering at the uh, Name Wikwadong Reconciliation Garden, which is uh, just being completed at the uh, south end of Kelso Park, actually Nawash Park, but Kelso Beach. You can get to it either from the grain elevator side and across the bridge, it's right there, or, or park at Kelso, that's at three. And then also on the Saturday the 2nd, the uh, Gitche Namahe Wikwadong Garden Sculpture Installation. So this was Sturgeon Bay where uh, they are, I shouldn't say we, though the city actually contributed, are putting in a, uh, a, a statue or a, 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 a structure uh, uh, that will be a, a sturgeon fish in it on Saturday at 2 p.m. So I encourage everyone to come if you don't have uh, other ceremonies that you're going to in your own municipality, we'd be happy to have you come and uh, and mingle with the Saugeen and Ojibwe Nation, et cetera, you know, from, throughout Grand Bruce here in Owen Sound. Thanks. 
Thank you very much for that, Councillor Bali. It was, uh, there are many, many things happening. I know that with the last uh, poverty task force meeting, <laughs> just hearing the many things that are happening all across uh, uh, the county, it's hard to keep up with them all. But I do know that the various municipal websites and uh, the library uh, websites is a good resource for people to go to to get information about what's happening near them. But thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Desai, you're next. Thank you, uh, Warden Hicks. Um, no, well, I see Councillor McQueen has his has, has hand up, so um, I'm assuming it's the second one that he's uh, going to talk to. So I'll hold on, hold off on that. Uh, the one thing um, that I, I do want to mention, and this isn't good news or celebrations, and it, it's, it's a pretty neutral statement. Uh, as everyone knows, yesterday was when proof of vaccination came into effect. Um, uh, understandably or otherwise, there there are a number number of irate people all over social media, some of whom have um, taken to saying that they are looking forward to giving staff at restaurants and uh, other places a hard time over, over these demands for proof of vaccination. Uh, I do want everyone to remember that um, this is effectively something that uh, is a provincial regulation, which uh, staff at independent businesses have very little control over. Um, so, you know, when you're, when you're visiting your local establishment and you're, you're seeing the staff person, they're probably someone, you know, uh, keep in mind that they're effectively just doing their job. They're following, uh, regulations that have been, um, uh, provided by the province and, uh, uh, just be nice to everyone in general. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Desai and Deputy Warden McQueen, you're next. Yeah, uh, good morning, County Council and uh, staff. Uh, just wanted to give you an update on our Ram Rodeo that's coming to our uh, municipality this weekend. Uh, just as of yesterday, we have over 800 tickets pre uh, sold already for the Saturday event and 461 for the Sunday. Um, and we're still a few days away. I know that we had a little bit of rain yesterday, but it looks like sun and rain clouds on Saturday and Sunday. So we're looking, hopefully it'll be a good, a good day for that. Certainly um, uh, the event is, as I brought up before, is uh, proceeds of this is going to the Markdale Hospital Foundation. So if you wish to attend, probably Sunday might be better than Saturday, but uh, tickets are still available online. Uh, also, I thought maybe the Deputy Mayor might have raised it, but uh, we had a very successful Kite Fest in uh, Grey Highlands itself. And uh, holy smokes, I tell you, I've never seen such big kites before and you've probably seen some pictures maybe on, on social media or whatever but uh, I know that uh, it was a well attended event great weather brings great people out and uh, certainly uh, it certainly did and uh, there was a number of food and craft vendors there as well and and the deputy mayor he was I think either frying something or cooking something on the, the rotary because the rotary are always there as well so maybe he may have had to add to that but uh, anyway he was working hard uh, doing what he could there. So, but yeah, very good, very well attended and uh, certainly search out um, some of those uh, maybe on social media because there was some kites that were bigger than RVs. So can you imagine uh, something that big? So it's almost like a kite. It's almost like a kite that helps pull up the big kite. It's sort of pretty amazing how, and they also had competitor uh, kite flyers and, and a number of things like that. So very successful, hoping for a uh, a return maybe for next year and um, and uh, other than that uh, it's uh, moving on to the color time when we'll start to see a few colors uh, in our in our area and we know the beaver valley also shows very well if you're out for a drive to take a drive that way and uh, view the view the uh, colors in the next few weeks thank you mr warden thank you deputy warden and you put a smile on my face as i go back to my childhood as a, a young boy in Guyana, uh, the kite festivals were a huge, huge deal. And I can remember as a child looking up at the sky and seeing all of those, you know, those colors, the, just the sky lit up with all the colors. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, thank you for that update. Uh, and by the way, in Gray County, we call that liquid stuff, um, liquid sunshine. Uh, we'll pray for Gamble. some for this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, Councillor Gamble, you're next. Yes, uh, I just wanted to say uh, last Saturday, we had our first annual car rally, our car show and tractor show. Uh, we had over 200 cars. 
which caught us completely off guard. We were right full and uh, we appreciate all the support we got. The funding is going for our new arena and hub. And as I said, uh, next year, we're planning on an even bigger one. That's my motion. Thank you very much, Councillor Gamble. I don't see any other hands, so I'm gonna say that's probably it uh, for our good news and celebrations. Thank you everyone for sharing. The last item on our agenda is uh, a motion for adjournment, which is moved by Councillor Patterson and seconded by Councillor Milne. I'm gathering no one is opposed to that, so we'll take a second to move on to the Committee of the Whole. So let me get my notes together here. <clears throat>